Today's topic is a brief introduction to game theory. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to do three things. First, you should be able to use game theory to set up models of strategic interactions between consumers or between firms. Second, you should be able to find the Nash equilibrium of a game. Third, you should be able to identify optimal strategies in sequential games. So, what is game theory? Game theory is a set of models and solution techniques that are used to analyze strategic interactions among different participants in a market. There are multiple ways to model strategic interactions between market players. We will start with the simplest games, which involve strategic interactions that occur on a single occasion. We call these games one-shot games. We usually represent one-shot games with a normal form game, which is a table. If we consider a simple two-player one-shot game in which each player has two possible actions, then we can represent the game using a two-by-two -two table. Normally, we will list one player's actions in the rows of the table, and we put the other player's actions in the columns of the table. We then fill in the cells of the table with each player's earnings from each action that they can take. By convention, we always list the row player's earnings first and the column player's earnings second. In this table, each player's earnings are also color-coordinated to make it easier for you to read. In this game, if player 1 plays top and player 2 plays left, then player 1 earns 1 and player 2 earns 2. If player 1 plays top and player 2 plays right, then both players earn 0. If player 1 plays bottom and player 2 plays left, then again, both players earn zero. And if player one plays bottom and player two plays right, then player two earns, sorry, player one earns two and player two earns one. When considering how a player will rank order outcomes from different actions, we assume that players have ordinal utility. This means that some action A will be preferred to some other action B if the earnings from action A are greater than the earnings from action B. Now that we know how to represent a game in normal form, we can start to consider how to solve a game. The first step in solving any game is to look for dominant strategies. A dominant strategy is a strategy that always generates the best possible outcome for a player regardless of what the other players in the game do. The important part of this definition is the last part, which says that a dominant strategy is the best thing for a player to do no matter what the other players in the game do. Let's use our example game to see if either player has a dominant strategy. If player 2 plays left, then player 1's optimal choice is to choose top. If player 2 chooses right, then player 1 should choose bottom. Because player 1's optimal choice depends on what player 2 does, player 1 does not have a dominant strategy. We can repeat this analysis by looking at the game from player 2's perspective. If player 1 chooses top, player 2 should choose left. If player 1 chooses bottom, then player 2 should choose right. Here again, because player 2's optimal choice depends on what player 1 does, player 2 does not have a dominant strategy. Since neither player has a dominant strategy, there is no dominant strategy equilibrium to this game. Let's consider another example in which players do have a dominant strategy. In this case, if player 2 chooses left, player 1 should choose top since player 1 would prefer losing 3 to losing 6. If player 2 chooses right, then player 1 should still choose top, since losing nothing is preferable to losing 1. Since player 1 should always play top regardless of what player 2 does, player 1's dominant strategy is to play top. If we examine this game from player 2's perspective, 
If player 1 chooses top, then player 2 should choose left, since losing 3 is better than losing 6. If player 1 chooses bottom, then player 2 should still choose left, since losing nothing is preferable to losing 1. Since player 2 should always play left, regardless of what player 1 does, player 2's dominant strategy is to play left. Since both players in this game have a dominant strategy, the dominant strategy equilibrium of this game is top left. This game is an example of a very special game known as the Prisoner's Dilemma. In this game, player one and player two are criminals who have been accused of a crime and placed in different interrogation rooms. Each player's actions are either to confess the crime and implicate their associate or deny that they committed the crime. If both players deny, then the prosecution only has enough evidence to convict them of a lesser crime, and they each receive light sentences of one year. If one player confesses and one denies, then the player who confesses gets a plea deal and gets no time, and the player who denies is convicted using the evidence provided by the confessor and gets six years. If both players confess, they receive an intermediate sentence of three years. Because both players have a dominant strategy to confess, this is the predicted outcome of the game. However, both players could be better off if they both deny. Because both players could be made better off by doing something different, the dominant strategy equilibrium is not Pareto efficient. The general class of games in which players playing their dominant strategy results in an inefficient outcome are known as prisoner's dilemma games. The voluntary contributions game in public goods markets is an example of another game that has the same incentives and outcome as a prisoner's dilemma game. Sometimes, even though a player does not have a strategy that is always better, they will have a strategy that is always worse. Such a strategy is known as a dominated strategy. Therefore, if you fail to find a dominant strategy equilibrium in a game, your second step should be to eliminate any dominated strategies and see if that leads you any closer to a solution. Let's consider a more complicated game for this example. In this game, there are still only two players, but each player has three possible actions. Let's start by considering player one. For player one, playing top always gives earnings that are the same as or worse than both middle and bottom. Thus, for player one, we say that the strategy top is a weakly dominated strategy, and we can eliminate it as one of the strategies that player one is likely to play. Now that we have eliminated top, we should consider the game from player two's perspective. If player two knows that player one will never play top, then for player two, center is always at least as good or better than either left or right. When this is the case, we say that player two has a weakly dominant strategy to play center. Given this, player one should play bottom. Therefore, by eliminating dominated strategies, we have found the equilibrium outcome of this game. If we cannot find an outcome of the game by identifying dominant and dominated strategies, then step three of the analysis is to look for a Nash equilibrium. We start by identifying all pure strategy Nash equilibria of the game. If a player is playing a pure strategy, then they are choosing one strategy and sticking to it. Contrast this with a mixed strategy in which a player randomly chooses between two or more actions. An outcome is a Nash equilibrium if player A's action is an optimal response to player B's action and player B's action is simultaneously an optimal response to player A's action.
Let's consider a couple of examples to see how to find the Nash equilibrium of a game. To find the pure strategy Nash equilibria of a game, start by asking yourself this question for each outcome. At this outcome, given what the other player is doing, does either player has an incentive to change what they are doing? If the answer is yes for either player, then that outcome is not a Nash equilibrium. If the answer for both players is no, then the outcome is a Nash equilibrium. Let's consider the example from the start of this presentation. Let's start with the outcome top left. Does either player have an incentive to change what they are doing at this point, given what the other player is doing? Given that player one is playing top, player two does not have an incentive to change from left to right, since they will earn zero instead of two if they change. Similarly, given that player two is playing left, player one does not have an incentive to change from top to bottom. Since neither player has an incentive to change what they are doing, the outcome top left is a Nash equilibrium of this game. However, it is not necessarily the only Nash equilibrium of the game, so we should consider the other outcomes as well. We can easily rule out top right since both players have an incentive to change what they are doing at that point. We can rule out bottom left using a similar logic. We have one more outcome to check, which is bottom right. If player one is playing bottom, Player 2 does not have an incentive to switch from right to left. Similarly, if player 2 is playing right, player 1 does not have an incentive to switch from bottom to top. Therefore, this outcome is also a Nash equilibrium. We have found that this game has two Nash equilibria, top left and bottom right. Let's do one more example that's a bit more complicated. This game is similar to the two-player, three-action game that we examined earlier, except that some of the earnings have changed slightly. We know from earlier that top is a dominated strategy for player one, so to make our lives easier, we'll eliminate all outcomes involving player one playing top from consideration, since we know that all these outcomes, player one has an incentive to change what they are doing. We have six outcomes to consider. Let's start with middle left. If player one is playing middle, player two does not have an incentive to change to either center or right. Similarly, if player two is playing left, player one does not have an incentive to switch to bottom. Therefore, middle left is one Nash equilibrium of this game. If we consider middle center, at this outcome, given that player two is playing center, player one has an incentive to switch to bottom. So this outcome is not a Nash equilibrium. At middle right, given that player one is playing middle, player two has an incentive to switch to either left or center. So this outcome is not a Nash equilibrium either. At bottom left, given that player one is playing bottom, player two has an incentive to switch to right so this outcome is not a Nash equilibrium. At bottom center, player two also has an incentive to switch to right, so this outcome is not a Nash equilibrium. Finally, at bottom right, given that player two is playing right, player one has an incentive to switch to middle, so this outcome is not a Nash equilibrium. Therefore, we have found that this game has a unique pure strategy Nash equilibrium of middle left. What if we don't find any pure strategy equilibria for a game, or we find multiple pure strategy equilibria? In this case, we can also look for mixed strategy equilibria. In a mixed strategy equilibrium, players randomly choose between two or more strategies. The key to finding a mixed strategy equilibrium is to note that in such an equilibrium, each player will choose their strategies in such a way as to make their opponent indifferent between their possible choices.
Let's consider an example. In this game, we found that there were two pure strategy Nash equilibria, top left and bottom right. In a game such as this, there will also be a mixed strategy equilibrium. Let's let P be the probability with which player 1 chooses top, which means that they will choose bottom with probability 1 minus P. Player 1 wants to choose P to make player 2 indifferent between playing left and right. If player 1 plays top with probability P and bottom with probability 1 minus P, player 2's expected earnings from playing left are 2P. Player 2's expected earnings from playing right are 1 minus P. To make player 2 indifferent between these two choices, player 1 should choose P so that player 2's expected earnings from the two choices are the same, which means that 2P equals 1 minus P. If we solve this equation for P, we find that player 1 will play top with probability 1 third and bottom with probability 2 thirds. We can conduct a similar analysis to find player 2's optimal strategies. Player 2's probability of playing left is Q and their probability of playing right is 1 minus Q. Player 2 should choose Q in order to make player 1 indifferent between playing top and playing bottom. Player 1's expected earnings from playing top are equal to Q. Player 1's expected earnings from playing bottom are 2 times the quantity 1 minus Q. In order to make player 1 indifferent between playing top and playing bottom, player 2 should play left with probability 2 thirds and right with probability 1 third. When we combine each player's mixed strategy, we have found the mixed strategy equilibrium of the game. So far, in all of the games that we have studied, players make their choices simultaneously. In many strategic situations, players make their choices sequentially. To represent a sequential game, economists often use the extensive form of a game. An extensive form representation of a game is simply a tree. We put the player who goes first at the first node of the tree and create a branch for each of player 1's possible actions. The player who goes second goes at the end of player 1's branches with his possible actions as branches as well. We put the earnings for each player at the ends of the branches following the convention that we list the first mover's earnings first. Color has been added to this diagram to help you link players, actions, and earnings. To solve sequential games, we use a process called backward induction. With backward induction, we start by determining the optimal strategy for the player who goes last, and then given this, determine the optimal strategy for the player who moves first. The game represented in this diagram is a version of a game called the Proposer-Responder game. This game can be generalized to apply to all sorts of negotiation situations. In this game, the proposer has four dollars, which he can de decide to divide either evenly or unevenly. Once the proposer announces the division, the responder can either accept or reject the proposer's offer. If the responder accepts, the money is divided according to the proposer's chosen decision. If the responder rejects the proposal, both players get zero. We can see that in this game, the responder's optimal choice is to accept either offer, since getting something is better than getting nothing. Given this, the proposer's optimal choice is to make the uneven offer. Therefore, the equilibrium outcome of this game will be for the proposer to make the uneven offer and the responder to accept it. An interesting question is whether, in reality, responders are willing to accept uneven offers. This, and many other applications of game theory, are the focus of experimental and behavioral economics. Unfortunately, these topics are beyond the scope of this lesson, but I encourage you to explore them on your own.
This concludes this introductory lesson on game theory.